Hi everyone, I'm Roy Baines and welcome to this talk with Tom Q&A session. I'm joined by Tom Bradbury. Tom, how are you doing? I'm very well, Roy. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Well, thank you, mate. Thank you. And um, so it's just a series of questions, a few, from, a few from myself and a few from the fans. And how have you sort of, have you had a chance to sort of speak to any fans on social media or anything? Because obviously it's been quite difficult with fans not being in, in this sort of ground. I've uh, received a few messages um, on social media sort of thing. Um, but yeah, not not really spoke to many fans, to be honest. Um, it's a shame because normally sort of after, after a match, after a victory, it'd be nice to sort of speak to a few fans. Um, yeah, no, not really had any interaction as of yet. Yeah. So is that something you're looking forward to, sort of when fans come back in and sort of, sort of mingling with them? Yeah, when, no, I, definitely, I, um, I'm not really familiar with, obviously, the Halifax Suns fans, but um, I remember we played them last year when I was up at, uh, when I was playing for the Oval, we came up to the Shea and they were certainly very hostile. So uh, I'm sure we, if we're doing well, they can put that same passion yeah. into, you know, getting behind us boys. Yeah, and how have you felt the season's gone so far, Tom? We're obviously find ourselves in fifth place now, don't we? So, um, you know, you, you've got to say it's positive, really. Um, I think to start with, we were playing really well, just not really scoring the goals, but we've, uh, you know, definitely started scoring lots of goals now. So, um, we're moving our way up that table. So, I think it's a big, big month. You know, this next month's going to be big. There's some big games coming up, but yeah, we can stay in amongst that top seven now and, and definitely good season. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, you spoke about the scoring goals. You've scored uh, one, is it so far, isn't it? You got one. Yeah, I've <laughs> but um, yeah. I've missed a few few chances, few crosses have got me head on and yeah. should have seen the net rippling. But oh well, we'll uh, hopefully add to that tally come, come the remainder of the game. Yeah, and how have you felt sort of played in that position? Because you've been sort of like been an overlapping centre back, haven't you? Is that something that. It's a bit like what uh, Wilder does at Sheffield United, isn't it? Is it something sort of new to your game? Yeah, is it I, uh, well, a back three is my is my favourite position sort of thing. Um, yeah. I do like joining in. I like to think I'm comfortable on the ball. Um, but yeah, just really when I when I see a space open up, um, you know, Danny or Jack, whoever's playing in front of me, might sort of be in a one v one situation and if I can um, make it two v one, then you know I'm all for it. And, it's a few goals from it, so yeah, long may it continue. Yeah, definitely. And just sort of uh, casting your mind back to pre-season, obviously the pandemic, sort of adding the pandemic into sort of joining a new club pre-season, all that. Were you quite hopeful we'd actually get this far into the season and, and not really have anything sort of halted yet? Yeah, I mean, when the season got the go-ahead, I think that was the hardest sort of hurdle, was it were. Yeah, you know the funding got announced, and once they they started and they played, what are we now seventeen games. I think. So, yeah, something you know, like that. It'd be silly now to, to sort of call the season quits. I think it was just once we got off the ground, you know, we started playing games. It'd be yeah, it'd be pointless playing this many games to then write it off. So you know that was the hardest bit, and now hopefully we can cram in thirty odd games in about four months or whatever. It is. Yeah, it's going to be some tired legs. I know that, but yeah, just got. To, Make sure you keep plugging away. And it might be a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday from the end of the season. You never know. So yeah. Wouldn't that be mental? Do you think we'll get it finished, though? Do you think we will eventually? Yeah, get I believe so. Um, I hope so, because I don't like sitting at home. That's boring. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I definitely hope so. And like I said, they might get sort of 30-odd games in and, and maybe say, you know, that's enough, that's enough points or that's enough... Um, I don't know what it is. That's enough sort of games to yeah. be able to be on point for games within what position in the league. But, you know, just going off sort of topic, really, if the, if the vaccine can kick in a little bit and hopefully come, you know, March, April, then, uh, you know, we'll hopefully be able to finish all the matches. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And um, sort of the coaching side of things is what I just want to sort of touch upon is, I um, spoke to Gaffer about it last week and I think I read one of your articles in the Halifax Curry and you mentioned it as well. How important has the coaching been this season for you lads, sort of on the on the playing side? Well, we've uh, we've obviously got the Gaffer, Millie and then Sarge coming this year. Yeah. Um, and all three of them have been brilliant, to be honest. 
Um, they've all sort of, sort of got different roles. Um, and maybe Sars coming in, I don't know if they can mention this, has allowed him to sort of not so much have more of a, how they word it, he sort of sits back and watches a lot more so he can sort of see a lot more in training rather than maybe he's got to run the session and focus on how it's going. He can sort of watch individuals and look at how they're performing. So that sort of adds a little bit of pressure to uh, the training and making sure the standards are up. So then, you know, the training is a lot better and we get a lot more out of it. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, I'd just say they've all got their own sort of strengths. And yeah. They each spend valuable time with, you know, all the players. So it's really good. Yeah, would you say you've sort of settled in quite well? CFCI I'm, I'm loving it, yeah, absolutely loving it. Um, me, uh, me girlfriend sort of up from this, she, she lives sort of near York, um, North Yorkshire, so yeah. it's nice to sort of be close to her, um, but more importantly, um, it's nice <laughs> to just be at a team sort of where the manager sort of really values me. And, yeah. Um, you know, I've had some lovely messages off the fans as well. Um, yeah, really happy, really settled, and, and yeah, really looking forward to what we do. Yeah, and how does it compare to the other clubs you've been been at? Obviously, well, we can go through them as well. Um, just got them wrote down here. So obviously, you started your you were at Reading and Oxford youth wise, weren't you? And then you were in the was it yeah, an academy was, sort of MK really Dons? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then obviously you were at MK Dons sort of academy wise. Came through there and joined. Is it Bishop Stortford and then Banbury? Yeah, so Banbury, yes. Banbury mainly. Um, that's where I quickly sort of grow, grew into a man. Um, learned that, you know, academy football was just miles off it, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, it teaches you to pass it well and control it well. But, you know, when you're up against sort of men that, that are getting paid to play and they need to put food on the table sort of thing, they uh, certainly know how to make themselves known, as it were. Um, used to get whacked about all the time. <laughs> young, yeah. young skinny lad come in, thought he was... You know, I thought he was this, thought he was, you know, was just going to walk the league. Standards weren't great, but no, you need to, especially as a defender, you need to go improve, sort of make mistakes and, and grow up and sort of fill into your frame and, yeah, be, uh, be way more aggressive than they teach you at academy football. Yeah, definitely. And obviously after that, you went to Dundee in Scotland. Mm. Um, how, did, how would you compare the sort of, the differences between where you've come from with Banbury to going to Dundee? How... What were the uh, differences of that? Sort of, at my age, Banbury would, you know, build a real sort of build a. It was a good sort of move because um, at the time, yeah, I probably was much better than them as a football player. But like I said, I needed to do the, the nasty bits of the game and, and learn how to sort of play against older players. And then moving to Scotland, obviously, you move into full time football and you're, you're training with some unbelievable pros, to be honest. Um, I mean, I'm not going to read off a few names, but some of them have played in the Premier League down south. Um, some of them have played, you know, sort of Champions League, Europe League football. Yeah. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a big move. It was a good move. Um, it was sort of one that I quickly had to adapt to the full-time training sort of thing. I mean, I had that at MK, but, you know, you'd, you'd had sort of a year off or two years off with family. So, yeah, it was just something that I went for. Um, Learned so much about living, living away from home, living on my own. It was obviously a long way from the family. So, you know, as, as Banbury sort of grew me up on the pitch, I'd say Dundee sort of grew me up off it and yeah. sort of learned valuable skills. Learned how to, learned how to cook a few nice meals. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And um, obviously, you went for um, went you were on loan at York and then obviously you signed for Yeovil permanently from Dundee. Um, obviously, I put all all those clubs compared to Halifax, how would you compare the setup here at Halifax compared to those clubs? I mean, if, if I'm going to be honest, Halifax is probably the most professional. Um, the amount of detail that the coaches go into in terms of looking at the opposition, um, you know, we, we wear the old GPS monitors to track how hard we're training, how much we're training, that sort of thing. Um, there's obviously Adam, um, the strength and conditioning coach, has come in this year, so he's brilliant with us in the gym. So I think, yeah, Halifax ticks every base, really. Um, yeah, they, they cover all aspects of sort of professional football. I'd say it's, yeah, it's got to be the most professional out of the lot. 
Yeah, really good. That. Um, and how would you sort of, on the pitch, cohesion-wise, with your centre-back partners, how have you felt that's gone, obviously, with Neil Byrne, Nathan yeah, Clark, Neil we, uh, Yeah. Sorry to butt in there quickly, but we, uh, we get on great. <laughs> we've, uh, it's a shame because of COVID, we've not had many sort of team bonding days out, as it were. Um, but no, around sort of the training down, they're definitely a great bunch. Um, yeah. I, I would say there's no sort of, there's no sort of big timers. No one thinks they're, you know, they're above, they're above the level. They're above the league. Um, and we we've all sort of bought into the gaffers, the gaffers way that you know we know what we've got to achieve or want to achieve this season. Um, and yeah, we do have a laugh and a joke at times. But when we're training and we're on the pitch, we're uh, fully switched on and focused to get that job done. Yeah, and I think the centre back partnerships that obviously it don't matter who's playing. Um, you know, what that three at the back is or the two at the back or whatever, you've all got that partnership. It's kind of opened my eyes because I've never thought of it in that way. But do you think a centre-back partnership is just as important as like a strike partnership? And I don't think people really look at it. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, uh, really. if you look at historically the sort of the, the teams that win the Premier League sort of thing or win titles, yeah. you usually can name the whole back four for every game. So yeah. Or back five. Um, and yeah, it's just about building relationships, really. Because you know, if I'm regularly playing with Bernie or Dad or Clarkie or whoever it is that might be in, the more I sort of play with them, the more I know what they're going to do, and they yeah. know, you know, my strengths, my weaknesses, and they they might help me out when I'm in trouble, that sort of thing. And yeah, it's just about creating a good bond. And, and, um, yeah, sounds really good. And just sort of off the pitch, Tom. Obviously, you've moved from. Down south to up north. How? Yeah. What's the sort of comparisons? It's it's a question. I think I always ask it to the lads who come come up north because from down south because they've always got so much to say about the differences and things like that. What have you found the most different? And obviously you went to York as well before. So. Yeah, well obviously me. Uh, so me, me girlfriend's family are always trying to get me to uh, be a northerner. Yeah. You know, I think they. Uh, what do they do? They serve me sort of a few different dishes on me rice right dinner. So. Yeah. I've never never had mashed potatoes before when we went to dinner ever. Um, I think they got mushy peas as well the other week. Or Did you? Last, what's going <laughs> on here? Like, <laughs> it's uh, always roasty down south. Nice yeah. crispy, but um, I'm I'm liking it really being up north. I yeah. uh, definitely enjoy it. Mm. I'd probably say people are more polite. I, mm. I mean, I grew up sort of forty minutes sort of northwest of London. Right. So, yeah. yeah. If you went into London, my God. It's just that everyone's on their phone, wouldn't say hello sort of thing, but get up here, everyone uh, yeah. Everyone calls you love, that's what I find. <laughs> uh, right, well. Yeah, you got a Yorkshire tea, haven't you? Yorkshire tea mug as well. Oh, yeah, have you seen yeah. that? Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we are. <laughs> Yorkshire lad as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I'm the, that's why I've just said about a right love. Look, look, look. <laughs> that's class, that. That's so, cool. Yeah. Behind that again. Me, uh, I used to travel up from yoga, obviously. Yeah, yeah. You're getting a lot of mentions from this, I tell you. Mm. Anyway, How's it like it? Sort of going from living, did you live in Yeovil? Sort of, that's like on the other side of country, isn't it? From, yeah, from where we are, isn't it, really? So, was it a big transition with coronavirus as well going on at the time? And well, it's still going on, isn't it? Um, was it quite a, a weird yeah, one? A big move up here. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I'm I'm all over the country to be honest. <laughs> me, uh, <laughs> me parents have retired to Yarra Wai, so they're like right down south. Yeah. Couldn't couldn't get any further. I mean, you have to get a boat for that. <laughs> um, my brother lives in Bedfordshire, um, and then obviously my girlfriend's up in North Yorkshire. So I'm, I'm sort of in between the three. So. Right. Yeah. I'm always moving about, and then yeah. currently in the, in this club out in Leeds. So yeah, <laughs> and, uh, I'm I'm used to it. I'd say I. I used to fly back from Scotland quite regularly, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, it sounds really good, that, Tom. And um, I was just reading, I read one of your articles that you've done previously. I think you did it with Luke Davis, um, went in the programme. And um, you spoke about last season, of, well, sort of the players that were at Halifax last season. You knew a couple of them, and they were saying really good things about the club. Was that one of the main reasons you, you came here, as well as, obviously, relocating? It was probably a little bit nicer, as well, wasn't it, for you to come up here? Yeah, so I spoke to uh, Toby Show Silver. Um, yeah. I've I've known him for about a year now. So yeah, and he he had nothing but good things to say about the club. And, and the manager, more importantly, 
um, it was, you know, I mainly wanted to do my homework on him and find out what he was like. And Kobe, Kobe Ray to that end. So, yeah. yeah that, that's what sort of swayed me to come in here. Yeah, I was just looking at that program as well. It's got gold on the front, and that's actually fine. We have another question is, it's getting oh, gold as well. Is oh, actually when gold, <laughs> when gold came to the club, was oh, it a bit like, good. was it good for you? Because obviously it was like, you, you've come in and then gold's come in and it's a bit like, you know each other kind of thing. Yeah, so I was actually here quite a while though before he came, so yeah. I was all settled, but he, uh, yeah, he moved into the Alpha and settled in his house. Oh, right, yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him, but... Yeah. He's, uh, he is a good lad. So. Yeah, so was that, that was something that sort of good for, for both of you, wasn't it? Sort of uh, knowing each yeah, other. We, uh, yeah. yeah, it would have been nice, obviously. He would have done it on the pitch and, and been able to stay, but these things happen and you know, I might come across him again in the future, you know. Yeah, definitely. And I um, can probably move on to the fans' questions. There's, there's a fair yeah, few yeah. that we can go through. Bring so, uh, yeah, we'll start with this one. It's from Samuel Mycola. He says, how long do you plan on staying at Halifax Town? And do you, do you think you can see us go, going to the Football League with us, with you here, kind of thing? I'd love to do that. Um, I mean, I'm speaking to my family. That's, that's my number one aim for this summer. I can get or we can get Halifax to League Two. And that's the dream. Um, definitely want to do that. And, and then to answer the first bit, I'm obviously... Just on a one year deal, so it's up to the gaffer, he'll have to sit me down and tell me, tell me what's, what's going to happen. But yeah, until that happens, I have to say, keep working hard. And I'd, I'd love to sort of say, I'm uh, really enjoying the time in the situation more. So, and yeah, we're, we're a good side, so let's get it into League Two and then let's hope to get talking. <laughs> yeah, great stuff. And uh, Matty Thompson asks, Who is the best player you have faced this season and why? Oh, that is in this league. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I want to answer that because then <laughs> you know we'll, we'll play him second time round and someone yeah. might have tagged him or something. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I, I can't be answering that because I can't. I can't pick anyone up like that. Yeah, Especially no. Especially or something. He needs. A, yeah, you don't want to feel like I'm. I'm scared of him. Yeah, no, you do right. You do right, Tom. And uh, Daryl asks. Have you got any hobbies, or sort of what's your main hobbies? And do any of the lads have any strange hobbies that you know about? I'm into uh, into me golf. It's obviously too wet at the minute to, to play, but I'm definitely yeah. into me golf. Um, into me horse racing as well, although uh, I'm not a gambler. It's, <laughs> if Bailey's mum's watching, I'm not a gambler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, just, uh, yeah, me, me uncle's into the horse racing. So right, yeah. And then, in terms of the lads, um, not too sure really because similar to before we've not really been able to get out and about yeah. COVID, so we've not really had many social interactions so yeah I won't be too sure yeah no no worries and uh, Jezza7 asks does not having any fans uh, in the ground to watch affect your game in any way I wouldn't say it affects the game but um, I certainly prefer playing with them yeah. I mean, we only got we only got two games this year. I think it was Weymouth and Older Shot away, so it wouldn't have been the home game. But yeah. it was certainly a lot better. I mean, yeah, the yeah. when you play away from home, I love I love getting abused. To be honest, you, know, <laughs> you, you get called all sorts of things tonight, yeah. and then you go and win five two or three yeah. or one. Or so. You just turn around at the final whistle and give you a smile. And then, yeah, and yeah, it makes you feel good. So yeah, I, I'd love to. Yeah. How were those games, you know, when it were just just the home fans? I think it was South Shields as well, wasn't it? I think that was the first time in the FA Cup that you lads had actually played with just the home fans. And I remember every literally every touch a Halifax lad made, they were just shouting and abuse. It's all you could hear, wasn't it? Does it yeah. How was that sort of the experience of playing with that? I I, I mean, I didn't play the South Shields game, but the others, I, uh, I love it. Because yeah, yeah. Yeah, some right characters, honestly, some real characters. I mean, morning chance. Well, I've had someone must have been as old as at least eighty odd for that. And she was, yeah. she was one of your sort. I mean, <laughs> you can't be saying stuff like that. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm talking like full on yeah. work player, whatever you can say, all that sort of stuff. And I looked at it, 
it was this little grandma that I was looking at. Yeah, yeah. There you go. It's too right, I love it. I'm all for it. Yeah. If they're giving me abuse and then then okay. I'm a loser. Great thing. Yeah, great. And uh, the next question is from Jake. And he asks, what's your highlight of the season so far? I think score on TV with knives, that's not to be found. Yeah. Um, Although we didn't win the game, I think not County, that 93rd or whenever it was, that equaliser, the sort of yeah. more emotion that come through me. I, think I looked over and I was swimming over to celebrating the castle was doing the same. Yeah. Just, you know, we've been in there after 45 minutes. You know, it's quite the so, yeah, they've gone on TV and then that goal against that Yeah, great stuff. And uh, Paul Oaks, the uh, keeper coach, obviously, he asks, should all DJ responsibilities be handed over to Jacko? Yeah. <laughs> so, the story behind that is uh, Alan Jackson, our kit man, he's, uh, he plays a pretty good tune, that's it. The old school one, but a few of the boys are just not having to do. Yeah. Everyone a bit more up the R and B stuff so he played uh, I think he put Barry Manilow on the other week and something yeah. like that. I think that's how well. Great. And um Charlie Grant on Instagram asks, and I think this is a good question, this I think especially when before I started sort of working in media and obviously you sort of pick it up eventually, but when I was just a fan, because obviously I'm a Rapid City fan, I don't know if I should should actually mention that, but yeah. um, you'd always wondered sort of what teams are players supported, so what team do you support is the question Charlie Grant's asked. So, now I'm up here, I'm sort of leaning towards Leeds. I don't know that. Leeds? Yeah, well, my dad didn't give me a choice, he made me support yeah. like that. But I can't really watch them. Like. No. I know they're <laughs> the Some of the stuff they play is awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you hit it up to this big front man and flick it on. Yeah. And it's not exciting. So now we've uh, moved up here, we've got an excuse to support these. Yeah, that's. They exactly. play good stuff. I mean, they might be goals, but they score goals. So it's a good one. Yeah, really good stuff. And uh, Dan Carr asks, what's your favourite football moment? And um, I, think, I, I don't know if that's your career wise or, or just in general, but you, know, you can give both if you like, Tom. Oh, um, I'm not too sure really because I've only got 22, so I've not had too many big um, I think it would just be, you know, when, when, you, when you get to a sort of pro level and you, you play with a name on the back of your shirt, I think uh, doing that and having the old man, he's always sort of carted me about, taking me to a place. So, you know, playing professionally, you know, maybe scoring with the name on the shirt and him watching in the crowd, I think, I think that would be what, you know, what I thought there. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. And is that something you sort of just keep in your house, your your shirts and all your sort of memorabilia from your playing? Do you just collect it? Yeah, I've just actually sent, sent him one to put it on his wall. Um, I mean, from my point of view, I'm uh, open to know that. Yeah. Um, and the minute, yeah, you just sort of keep them. I see him as a just sort of you know, progression, really. I look at it and think, I want the next best one, and the next yeah, best thing, a new league, and hopefully uh, get them in the shirt. Yeah, great. And um, the next question. And it's from Urban Newton. He asked a question last week and he's asked the same one. And it's about what your favourite flavour of Club Biscuit is. And oh, Pete, okay. Wells, Pete Wells said mint last week. And I didn't even know that were a flavour. I just thought they were orange. But um, go yeah, ahead, Tom, what's yours? I could murder one now, actually. I love it. <laughs> um, I'd have a... Uh, it's got to be orange for me, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like you said, just stick to what you know. Orange yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I Nice few dunks in the cup of tea, that'd be lovely. Yeah, we, get, we need to get um, Tom Stacey when he edits this. He needs to start like putting a table or something, because I think we're going to get this question every week. Every time we do an interview like this, he'll just oh, put right. it there. Good tally, yeah. But Pete's, yours and mine, and then it's just, come to end of the season, we'll just have everyone's on there. I think that'd be a 
good thing to do. That's one for Tom when he edits this. So uh, right, we'll we'll end with these two. So these are from from your friends. So we've got one from Matty Featherston, and he asks thoughts on the standard of the Aylesbury. Have I said that right, Aylesbury? Yeah, yeah. Well, Brilliant. thoughts on the standard of the Aylesbury Six Aside League. <laughs> Cool, great standard, I have to say. So, just, uh, you know, back in the day when I lived around that area, I'd play sort of six aside with my friends. And uh, yeah, just used to love it. You know, six aside is brilliant. You just, you play, you know, all sorts of players, some skillful, some not so skillful, some yeah. 10 stone overweight, somebody, some that can't kick a ball. So, it used to be a great laugh. Yeah, he, uh, he was the. He was my fellow centre back in that sort of thing. Right. Brilliant yeah, stuff. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll end on this one. Obviously, we spoke about this at the start, and I found it quite interesting. This, so I think this is a perfect one to end on. It's from Thomas Dell, and he's asked what your favourite, or oh, sorry, what your proudest football moment is, and then he's put in brackets, surely winning Wembley in the famous Bradbury Garden battles. So if you just want to <laughs> tell us all what that is. Okay, so uh, luckily enough, my parents had quite a good sort of back garden or big back garden growing up and uh, I lived in a sort of little village just outside Elfrey and yeah. uh, we used to have at least at least about 15 to 20 lads all sort of from the ages of about 13 to 16 at the time yeah. and uh, we'd be on the on the school bus on the way back from school and it'd be right everyone over to Bradley's house for about yeah. Four o'clock, and it just we just play Wembley. So one man in goal, about twenty people on the pitch, everyone against everyone, and obviously a couple people go out each round. You've got scores to get through to the next round. Yeah, it, it'd be unbelievable because you had you know boys as old as eighteen. I'd be about thirteen. I'd have to try and win it and stuff like that. So and back in that day, if you were young, sort yeah. of thirteen, fourteen. If you won it, you was you were a good player. <laughs> that was a big achievement. So, yeah, yeah, lovely day for the, yeah, a good old memory that is. <laughs> yeah, and actually we'll just end it on a, on a final question. So obviously, because we've got a game tomorrow as well, so we might as well sort of just put that in. I'm not sure when this will go out. It might be going out before our game with Southport tomorrow. It might go out after. But um, what are your hopes for the remainder of the season? And obviously, if you can just sort of embed a bit about the FA Trophy tomorrow against Southport. And obviously, if we win that game, then we're either playing Boreham or Torquay. So. Yeah. So, starting with tomorrow, um, I mean, we, we're expected to win. So, anything but to be a sort of after win. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. We uh, obviously won't name the team, but we're putting a strong side out. So, we'll have a good chance. Um, and then, for the rest of the season, I think, you know, everyone, everyone's got to say chaos. Um, but it's, it's really, it is achievable because, you know, we're in there now. We've played, how many games? We've played sort of 16, 17 games. We've nearly played every team. You know, I've not seen anyone that's that signed us. Yeah. No one's really better than us. I mean, when we get our past the foot, they were great teams. So it would just be about, you know, staying in that top seven all the way till May or June, whatever it is. Um, and then, you know, three games or two games from, from me too. So definitely play off and then you know work as hard as we can and then we get get the club into league too that'd be perfect yeah that's great stuff Tom thank you mate and that's all right pleasure to talk to you mate cheers yeah.